啊、oh, ，OK， 呃、uh, ，我已经开始录像了，因为你们，嗯、呃，哦、oh, ，你们，呃，应该可以看到。OK， so， 嗯、um, ， so probably we can， 呃、uh, ， we can start， and， 呃、uh, uh, ， wait a minute， probably， 呃、uh, ， we should， 呃、uh, ， use a， a good， 呃， background， as our， 呃、uh, ， class。Okay, so, um, of course, uh, first, thank you very much for coming to today's class, and uh, a lot of you have uh, already uh, followed and uh, uh, taken part in our uh, class for a long time, more than three months, uh, for which I'm pretty uh, grateful. And today is actually our uh, first uh, Slavic class, and uh, as I have noticed, uh, a lot of you uh, in our um, participants, uh, you are specialists in uh, Slavic philology or Slavic linguistics, and uh, I have to admit that uh, I am not a specialist for Slavic linguistics. But uh, still, I want to uh, kind of offer such uh, classes uh, so that for the Indo-European studies uh, in general, you have a basic idea of all the important branches. Uh, as for me, I mean, you probably know that I specialize really in Tocharian and uh, Sanskrit or Indian uh, materials. But uh, as I said, as a linguist, as an Indo-European linguist, you actually need to know uh, other languages, other families. Uh, I mean, uh, to various, uh, to different degrees of, um, how to say, the proficiency or uh, specialty and so on, yeah. So, so actually, basically, my class uh, is not for very advanced Slavic linguists. If you are, you can just choose to <laughs> leave our uh, class. But rather for those who have little experience with Slavic linguistics, but still have interest in uh, this branch. Because as you already know that, um, Slavic languages and uh, other branches, they are pretty important for our whole picture. Uh, okay, that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and you are actually my target audience. <laughs> okay, so, so basically, this is a course for those who usually have no or little experience with uh, Slavic linguistics or Slavic materials. And for example, if you uh, study uh, Vedic, if you study uh, Sanskrit, uh, you probably uh, find some words, uh, Indian words, Sanskrit words, uh, cognate with Slavic words, mm, preserved like in uh, in Russian or in older uh, in other uh, Slavic languages. Or if you are study if you are now studying modern uh, Slavic languages like Russian, it will actually to some extent help you if you have some knowledge uh, of the uh, Slavic linguistics. Okay, so this is basically the, uh, the, the purpose. I have to put it clear. This is actually our purpose. Uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, probably we can uh, we can start. And as usual, uh, the for our uh, serial, I make it a little bit bigger so that you can all uh, see that. I think it's big enough, right? Okay, I think it's. Or, or should I? Okay. Um. Uh. So. Um. So probably, uh, so this is our, uh, this is unsere Ziel. Yeah, this is unsere Ziel, yeah. Okay, this is our purpose, okay. Uh, so as Euro, I uh, start with a very uh, brief introduction, which includes uh, first the most important texts 
and then the lexicons uh, for the uh, study of Slavic linguistics, and then grammar uh, you can use. Okay, and this is for the introduction. And then comes to your second part. Uh, so you, 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 you can see this, right? Yeah, you, can, you can see this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then uh, you have already seen, you have already seen here. So we start with a very brief introduction to the, um, to the language. And uh, actually for this course, uh, our first focus on uh, Old Church Slavonic, which is actually the oldest uh, preserved um, materials of the Slavic languages. Uh, okay, and then uh, there are actually two parts, uh, like other courses, we start with the grammar, and this grammar uh, has actually two parts. Uh, the first part is the synchronic one, uh, as in other course, uh, synchron, and then the second part uh, is diachron. And diachron, uh, naturally, uh, means uh, historisch, yeah. or the vergleichend, of course, uh, vergleichend. Yeah. So this is comparative, uh, German comparative, vergleichend, yeah. Okay, and then uh, the third part uh, is the lecture, uh, the reading. Uh, for the reading, uh, we um, just uh, uh, as I said, we start uh, we start with uh, Old Church Slavonic. So we read some uh, passages from the um, uh, from the New Testament translation uh, in uh, Old Church Slavonic. So uh, uh, OCS uh, equals uh, old church. These are some very uh, important uh, terminologies you have to keep in mind. What actually I uh, wrote here or here are actually the most important things and uh, you are supposed to keep them in mind as much as you can. Yeah. And in German, it's called uh, Altkirchen. Ah, application Slavish, or you can write it like this. So it's okay. V of uh, um, V of uh, foul. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then probably if we really have time, uh, we will. Uh, uh, is it too? Is is it has some problem with the internet? Why, why should I uh, write? Uh, uh, should I, should I, should I go on? Uh, okay, so, so I just, uh, I just move on. Okay. Um, yeah, this is basically our plan. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, so for for the very beginning, uh, the introduction, uh, the language, and you know that uh, I put it here. Uh, so about the uh, the language uh, OCS. So I use the abbreviation here. Uh, so this is uh, of course the Slavic uh, language, and inside the Slavic languages, there are actually three groups which you can find the introduction here. Uh, I just used, uh, so this is actually a very good uh, summary um, called um, uh, the handbooks, the handbooks of linguistics and communication uh, science. This is a very huge series. And then under this series, uh, you have a, a special uh, handbook for the comparative and historical Indo-European linguistics. Uh, and uh, this is volume three, uh, as you can see probably. This is volume three. And the first part is about the Slavic uh, linguistics. And inside this uh, section, uh, you can see, uh, wait a minute. So there are basically uh, three groups. Uh, if I, yeah, this is actually, um, 
the three groups of the uh, Slavic linguistics. If you want to take note or copy something, write something, you can, you can just uh, copy this. So there are basically three groups, West, South, and East. There's nothing uh, North, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. And then what we uh, today uh, study and begin with is the South Slavic. It's called Old Church Slavonic. Uh, or Old Church Slavic, there are uh, different names, but it's okay, it's actually the same thing. And then, for this language, we have another, actually, uh, if we, uh, I, I already mentioned, uh, in, uh, in um, German, it's called Altkirchen, Altkirchen Slavish, right? And Alt is old, and Kirchen is church and slavish is slavic so this is basically the same but this language is called also called out bulgarish so it is actually old uh, bulgarian uh, bulgarian why because this is actually a south slavic language and uh, the location is pretty uh, actually uh, i mean not the present day bulgaria but uh, in the ancient times, uh, about the uh, eighth or ninth century, because the oldest manuscript of this language is in the uh, ninth or tenth century. So this is uh, I, I put it here, the oldest, uh, uh, the oldest Slavic language, and then oldest manuscript. Uh, it's about nine to tenth, nine to nine to tenth. Uh, and nice to 10th century, uh, of course, AD, not not BC. Yeah, so this is pretty late. Uh, yeah, so this is um, kind of some uh, very basic information. So the name you find it uh, in several uh, versions, and then it is the oldest uh, Slavic language, and also the oldest manuscripts is about 9th to uh, 10th century. Okay, and then for uh, the other uh, languages, uh, like uh, the, uh, it's also, um, uh, let's check it. Wait a minute. Um, so there's also a Western, uh, so inside the South, there's also Western South. Um, and East. Yeah, and so on. So basically, uh, there are three groups. Okay, uh, so this is uh, actually uh, some very basic knowledge of the uh, language, and we will talk about it later in detail in the historical grammar, because uh, the Slavic language, as you probably know, that in uh, Indo-European languages, we actually have two categories, and uh, Slavic uh, belongs here. Oh, this is a certain language, yeah. Okay, different from different from Germanic or Latin, yeah. Okay, and then uh, this language, of course, is uh, written in a specific uh, script, and this is actually what we have uh, seen here. And this is actually the um, one of the oldest. It is not actually the oldest, but one of the oldest. The um, this also something older, but um, it's not so, um, how do you say that? There are not so many pages. So you find the information actually here. Uh, again, if you move on, if you move back, wait a minute. So actually this one called Kiev Misa, is probably the oldest extant, uh, um, extant uh, manuscript and uh, um, dating probably the um, 10th or early uh, 11th century or perhaps even to the 9th or early 10th century. So it's probably, uh, it's uh, about uh, this time, uh, wait a minute. So it's about this time, uh, 10th to, uh, wait a minute. So tends to uh, nice to tenth century, yeah, okay, and then 
you see, this is only seven folia, so seven pages. It's pretty, um, yeah, not not many pages, seven folia. Uh, but this one, uh, this is called uh, Codex uh, Zographins. It has 271 folia in Old Church Slavonic and additional 17 folia written in Macedonian uh, Church Slavonic. This is another variant, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at this Codex uh, Zaglofenis. Uh, Zaglofensis, so I copy the name here. So this is our um, oldest, um, no, not, not the oldest manuscript, but one of the oldest and uh, very important, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look. So you just have a very uh, general idea of this one. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, so uh, wait a minute. So this is like this. And, uh, and I copy the uh, website to our uh, WeChat group so that you can all see, wait a minute, so that you can all see. Um, and this is actually uh, the, uh, wait a minute, I can, I can show you. So here you can, uh, you can select the page, you can select the page here. And actually here uh, you can have a, a, how do you say that, a content uh, like, uh, like this. So this is actually all the uh, pages of this, uh, of this codex. And uh, what we are going to uh, read is actually the uh, Evangelii uh, uh, Luca or Luke, and it's situated in uh, from from here, from 129 to 224. This is actually what we are going to uh, what are we going to read. And uh, I jump back to the. Yes, we are going to uh, read from here, but not now. You just uh, now you just have a basic idea of the script. Okay, but this is actually only one script, and uh, uh, and the old uh, and the older one. And for uh, writing old church Slavonic, uh, actually we have two scripts. Uh, the first one, uh, as I have shown you, this is uh, uh, this is the first one. Uh, this is called uh, Gragolitic alphabet. So actually uh, for the uh, old church Slavonic, uh, two scripts, uh, two, uh, two scripts. And first one um, is called uh, Gragolitic alphabet. And the uh, uh, second or alphabet is, um, I mean, alphabet and sh uh, scripts are used uh, in a similar sense here, yeah. Okay, so you can see that this is uh, basically like this. Okay, and then uh, let's move on. This is another script called the uh, Cyr uh, Cyrillic script. This is the second one called uh, Cyrillic script. Or script, uh, Cyrillic alphabet. Okay, and this is actually basically more familiar to you, I guess. So you see, this is a cup. So uh, should I make it bigger? So probably bigger, a little bit bigger. Yeah. So this is basically uh, more familiar to you. This is K, this is L, this is M. And uh, so my first question uh, comes. Um, you, you, you see the shape, you see the shape of uh, L, and then probably the shape of D, and you know uh, from which script, or from which alphabet is this Cyrillic alphabet produced or invented. Can anyone tell me? Ah, yeah, great. Yeah, this is from the Greek alphabet. Okay, and then comes the second question. And uh, so, uh, in, uh, so I assume that uh, most of you or a lot of you have already known the uh, Russian alphabet. So for the Russian alphabet, 
Uh, so I put the Russian alphabet here. So this is actually, uh, so this is Russian alphabet. I, I make it clear, <laughs> this is the Russian alphabet. So I'm, I'm typing Russian alphabet now. So I typed this, uh, this one. Can anyone tell me how to pronounce this, uh, this consonant? This is, yeah, okay, so the, the consonant, the pronunciation is a verb, right? Why? Yeah. Why is it, but it is written as a B, right? It is written as a B, right? Oh, sorry, yeah. It is written like uh, English, uh, English letter B, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the example. Thank you for the uh, pronouncing. Uh, thank you for the explanation. Because uh, in the time during the uh, so uh, so uh, when the uh, slaves or Slavs borrowed uh, borrowed the alphabet, borrowed the Greek uh, alphabet. The Greek uh, alphabet, the pronunciation actually, uh, the pronunciation of this alphabet, I put it uh, in, in Greek so, uh, or in a bigger script. This is uh, this is a, a minuscule. This is a minuscule. Uh, so this is a just just a small and just a small you can you know okay. So this alphabet, the pronunciation is already like a verb, like in modern, already in modern Greek, I guess. In modern Greek, the pronunciation is like this. So this is about the 10th or earlier, of course, uh, like uh, 9th century. So already in the 9th century, in the Byzantine period, the pronunciation of the is like this one. And then uh, the second question, uh, pretty related, is that we all know that um, this alphabet is written like an H, right? Like an H, but the pronunciation is E. Why? Does anyone know that? Yeah, history. Because the alphabet comes from the Greek alphabet, uh, eta from eta, and eta, the pronunciation in the Byzantine period is already E. So this is actually basic, the, uh, this is actually uh, the, the, the logic, okay. So only uh, for, for this and others probably not really, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so now this is uh, alphabet, it's finished, and then let's move on. We will need this uh, script um, chart later. Uh, when uh, reading the manuscripts. Uh, so, and then let's uh, talk about the texts. Uh, so as you have seen, uh, the most important texts are actually the translation of the, uh, of the New Testament. And uh, you uh, find it here, uh, as I have shown you, uh, like, uh, let's make it a little bit, uh, I hope it's, it's big enough, right? So uh, you see, this is actually the uh, translation of the, uh, uh, wait a minute, yeah. Yeah, this is our uh, all uh, translations of the Evangelion. And uh, uh, yeah, this is basically translation from the um, uh, New Testament. So for the reading, uh, it is really helpful that we also compare the parallel or the original, the original Greek text. So if you come to this page, uh, page of uh, Titus, I put it also in our uh, group chat here. So for actually for this, uh, for you can, you can actually use this um, uh, website uh, for copying the text is pretty convenient. So uh, you move on to the ACE section. Uh, Slavonic, and you click Old Church Slavonic, and these are actually uh, the, uh, the several manuscripts. Uh, like uh, we are going to read this one, the uh, Grafensis, and you click this one, and you jump to the um, 
um, this page, and then you select uh, from the right side. So you select here, uh, actually for this manuscript, for this codex, we only have four um, evangelists, namely uh, Matthews, Marcus, Luca, and uh, Johann. Uh, yeah. And then we click this Luca, and then we uh, click chapter two, and then we click look up. So you see, we jump to this page. So this page contains uh, several, actually several different uh, manuscripts. Uh, if we turn back, uh, wait a minute, if we turn back. So you see, it contains uh, Greek New Testament and then Codex uh, Asemanianus and then another Codex and, uh, and so on, and also a Russian uh, New Testament. Uh, so uh, let's move back. Uh, we click Luca and uh, then uh, the second. So, so you click this one. So this is basically what we are going to read today. Wait a minute. So you click this one and, oh, wait a minute. You click this one and then you can actually compare. Um, yeah, this is a uh, uh, Gregolitic uh, alphabet and this is a Cyrillic uh, alphabet. And this is uh, 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 the, um, yeah, the Greek, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you hate the pink color, right? <laughs> you don't like it? You don't like it? <laughs> okay, so uh, probably we can, uh, we can copy the text here and we will use it later. Yeah. Mm. Um, I copy it here. Okay, we will come back to this later. So you just have a basic idea of uh, the, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, by the way, if you want to, uh, if you want to have the, uh, wait a minute. Uh, if you want to uh, have the, uh, another, uh, you have, if you want to have the translation, uh, we can uh, jump quickly to the, uh, wait a minute. We can jump quickly to the translation. So I myself actually use this page and this page is very good because uh, not only uh, the uh, Greek version, but also uh, the uh, Gothic. We also have the Gothic translation here. Yeah, so you, you have it here. So we have this, uh, so you basically have the idea of a basic idea of, of the content, right? So it's about Joseph. He went up to, uh, went up from the Galilee and out of the city of Nazareth. Uh, Nazareth into Judai and and so on. So it's pretty. The content is pretty simple, yeah. But we are going to analyze the forms of the words. Okay. So uh, so this is basically texts, and then let's move on to lexicon. So for the uh, old church Slavonic lexicon, there are several uh, options you have. Uh, the old church Slavonic. So the second, uh, so the part, wait a minute. Uh, so section one, two, uh, about the lexicon. Um, so what we talk about uh, probably uh, the very, uh, we talk about first from the basic one. So for the basic ones, uh, if you check, uh, uh, how to say that, a grammar, they usually have a, a lexicon or glossary at the end. And we will talk about this uh, later. So actually, uh, handbooks, uh, hand, handbooks or, or grammars uh, really, really have um, glossaries at the end. Uh, at the end, I'll end there, yeah. Okay. Sorry for the mixture of German and English. I just want to uh, kind of make you familiar with German. Yeah. Uh, so, and we will talk about it later. So for the real dictionaries, um, 
the most comprehensive and uh, uh, the authoritative one is this one. I show you this, um, this picture. Maybe. This is actually the uh, most comprehensive dictionary we're going to use, uh, but not always, because what we read, uh, we just read from some handbooks and there's already a good glossary. Uh, and also we actually focus on the historical linguistics. We're going to use the etymological dictionary. But this one, I, I, don't, I, I don't copy the, uh, so this is not, this, I, I can't copy here, but you can just uh, write down the name. It's called Lexicon Linguae uh, Pareo uh, Slovenica, Slovenica, and it has four volumes. Uh, it's published in uh, Prague. Uh, the first one is 1958. So this is actually a very comprehensive. So you see, the first volume has about um, 1,000 pages. So let's uh, probably uh, move on to uh, to any word uh, we, we just uh, uh, select um, any word so uh, the first one uh, I just uh, select a, a random word called aviti so you see uh, let's take a look at uh, a lexicon the structure so first um, uh, this is a verb, so this is actually a verb. And then uh, in the verb forms, uh, it lists, of course, the infinitive uh, in the uh, Cyrillic uh, alphabet. So this is the infinitive. Uh, and then uh, you also have the uh, perfect, uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, and then uh, under each, and then the occurrences of the, Verb form, like is it is it big enough? I can I can make it even bigger. This is a little bit bigger. So you see uh, the occurrences occurit frequenter, so it occurs frequently. Uh, and in uh, such manuscripts like uh, the Ruklam uh, uh, fences, this is what we have already seen. And this as is this asemanianos. I probably, yeah, so this is basically uh, occurs in such manuscripts. And then comes the uh, explanation. So for this verb, uh, it gives uh, the, uh, of course, uh, the Czechic, the Czech translation, and then the Russian translation, and then the German translation. So either, so, Either you know uh, Czech or Russian or uh, German, no, it's fine. Or probably you, you uh, there's also a Latin and uh, a Greek correspondence. So actually, the uh, you know is translated. So it is very important to uh, to know the original uh, Greek word. So it means that to. Uh, to open up for someone to display, to demonstrate uh, this uh, this meaning, yeah, and then um, it corresponds to Greek called apocalypse or phanerun, or in Latin it's called uh, revelare, manifestare, and so on. So this is uh, the translation and the explanation, and then this is actually a thesaurus. So you have all the occurrences of this word in the texts. So it is pretty. Um, and also this is, uh, there's also a, a reflexive form. Uh, you find it here, I'll make it a little bigger. So uh, with this uh, thumb, uh, you, I, I mean, my pronunciation uh, might be a little bit problem problematic, but uh, if you want to know the uh, exact, uh, or the uh, more correct uh, pronunciation, uh, you can refer. You can refer to this um, this table. It's it's better. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you find uh, sorry, you find the trans, you find the pronunciation here. Oh, here uh, as well as here. So it's also the pronunciation. Yeah, you, you find it here. So it's okay. Yeah. 
Um, and then, as I said, you find uh, uh, different translations. Uh, you find the uh, uh, original uh, Greek or Latin word. So, orastai and finestai and phanerustai, and so on. So, this is basically the most important dictionary we have to use if we want to read the Old Church Slavonic texts. And then uh, let's probably uh, move on to another uh, lexicon or other, other lexicons. Because this is actually, uh, what you have seen is actually the lexicon for the meaning. And then we move on to the etymological uh, lexicon. For the etymological lexicon, there are uh, actually uh, several, um, but not always. Um, so uh, so you, you have already seen that uh, we read Old Church Slavonic texts and uh, theoret theoretically we would need a lexicon, etymological lexicon also for Old Church Slavonic. But nowadays, um, there's actually no specific uh, OCS etymological lexicon. We actually use either the Russian. Uh, so actually, I, I, I use, I just introduce um, the most uh, convenient used ones. So uh, either you use the uh, uh, Russian etymological uh, dictionary, uh, dictionary, or uh, proto. Uh, Proto Slavic, sorry, Proto Slavic, um, Proto -Slavic um, etymological, etymological dictionary. These are actually two uh, options you have. So, for the Russian uh, etymological dictionary, so it means that if you want to check the OCS, the OCS stays for Old Church Slavonic. So, if you want to check the OCS uh, words, uh, you will probably have to know the Russian counterpart. Uh, if you don't, uh, probably you can uh, wait a minute. I just to show you the lexicon. So this is a, a lexicon uh, we use. It's called Russisch uh, Etymologisch Wörterbuch. And then, uh, for example, let's uh, let's check one. So. Uh, Uh, let's see if we have this. Um, yeah, this is basically uh, the. Uh, so, does anyone have this? Uh, so, well, what about we check the word we uh, already uh, mentioned in the in our group chat? So, I don't pronounce it. So, uh, but you probably know. Um, Yeah, so I don't pronounce it. Um, so this is actually the word someone has mentioned in our group. Uh, it's written like this. And uh, uh, you can see for this uh, word, uh, you have uh, basically uh, the uh, old Russian word. So actually for this word, we don't have the old church Slavonic one. Uh, it's a little bit pity. And uh, you can see uh, it has uh, etymological uh, connection, like with the Greek word kuon and with the uh, Indic uh, uh, Sanskrit word shva uh, or shuva and so on. Uh, so probably let's check some uh, for the... Um, I just to check randomly. Uh, If you have some um, uh, kind of uh, the word you want to check, so let's talk about the word for uh, for say uh, called skazati, and skazati, uh, you find it uh, it means uh, to say. Yeah. So I put it here. Uh, so I just to give you an example, right? So uh, this is actually uh, the skazati. So, yeah. so this is a, a verb for, uh, for say or sagen. 
And then it tells you, if you want to check this word, you have to go to uh, Kazati. Yeah, on Kazati, let's move on to uh, this. And actually the Russian alphabets, uh, uh, the, the, how to say that, the, the order, the order of the Russian alphabets, you, need, you still need some time to get used to it. And uh, it's, it's not quite like, it's similar to English, but it's not quite like that. Not exactly the same, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to uh, Kazati. Yeah, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, so you see this. Uh, for this word, uh, you find uh, here called Kazati or the or Kaju. So in this uh, dictionary, it gives you first the infinitive form and then the first person singular, yeah, called Kaju. And then it, the meaning, uh, it means Taigen, yeah. So we have another word called, um, mm, wait a moment. Um, this word uh, means uh, Taigen, yeah. Taigen means show, uh, sorry. Tiger means show, uh, demonstrate, you know, to yeah, show, uh, display, yeah. And then let's check, uh, let's check the uh, dictionaries, yeah. And then uh, you see, you also don't find uh, OCS or you don't find AT. Uh, so the OCS is, uh, uh, wait a minute, so OCS is abbreviation and another abbreviation is Altkirchen Slavish. So you find in German dictionaries, uh, AKSL for uh, Altkirchen Slavish and OCS in English text, in English books for Altkirchen Slavonic. But here in this dictionary, you find ABL, uh, ABG, sorry. This is actually the same thing. They are actually the same thing. As I told you, uh, it's uh, old Bulgarian, okay. And then uh, you find uh, uh, some uh, related words, but take care, this word is not Sanskrit. So in this dictionary, it's a little bit, this is not, this is not Sanskrit. I have to, I have to highlight it. This is not Sanskrit. This is serbo croatian uh, Yeah, this is uh, SKR. SKR is actually uh, serbo croatian Yeah, serbo croatian yeah. Uh, okay, and then for uh, the Sanskrit, it is written as a int. So in this dictionary, a int uh, equals out English. This is actually Vedic or Sanskrit. This is actually a uh, Vedic or uh, Sanskrit. It's, it's exactly a uh, Croatian. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Croatian. Yeah. yeah, it looks a little bit strange. Yeah. Okay, uh, so it's uh, Vedic or Sanskrit uh, here. And then you see it is actually um, connected with a Sanskrit word called Kashate, right? Kashate. So the Russian word uh, Kazati uh, is uh, cognate uh, with Sanskrit uh, ka, uh, ka shati. And the root is actually kash here. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, so we will talk about it later. So uh, wait a minute. So it's, it tells us some interesting correspondences between uh, the um, Slavic and the uh, Sanskrit one, but not now, yeah. Okay, so this is basically the uh, etymological dictionary, Russian etymological dictionary, and uh, it really has uh, uh, old church Slavonic forms. And then another dictionary, or another uh, two dictionaries uh, for the Proto-Slavic etymological dictionary. Uh, the first one, um, they're actually also older ones, but I just uh, tell you, uh, I just uh, uh, introduce uh, some uh, recently published ones, the new ones. Uh, so of course this one is, uh, uh, wait a minute. Um, so this is actually the, uh, this one. 
this is written in English, so it's more friendly uh, for a lot of you. Etymological Dictionary of the Slavic Inherited Lexicon. But pay attention, the name is very important. So it is not, uh, so I have to <laughs> say something. So uh, you, you, you already have uh, seen the name. So what is the difference between etymological dictionary of the Slavic inherited lexicon and etymological dictionary of uh, Slavic uh, lexicon? So it means that this lexicon tell, uh, deals with, so this Leiden, this is dictionary. So uh, this is a dictionary uh, by uh, of Slavic inherited. So published by Leiden in the Leiden series. Um, Leiden. This means that it only deals with only uh, PIE uh, to uh, Slavic. It only contains the words belonging to PIE, belonging to Indo European languages. But no uh, long words from uh, like uh, from uh, from other language families. So, uh, yeah, there's there's uh, a lot of uh, other there are a lot of long words from other language families which do not they are not Indo European languages. So this is actually uh, only PIE words which have their. Uh, traces or which have their um, which is inherited from the PIE okay but no loan words from uh, non uh, PIE yeah. okay but uh, but there's uh, nothing uh, like this right? right okay so this is okay and then if we turn to uh, if we move on to this dictionary so you see this dictionary is pretty um, also advanced, it is not really, uh, uh, for example, uh, if we check this, uh, if we check the, uh, how to say that, if we check the, uh, the word we have already uh, seen, uh, the, wait a minute, I, I, I need to see if I can, if I can find it, okay. So, so for this word we have here uh, called Kazati, and uh, it's pretty good that uh, because the old church Slavonic form is basically so this form is actually the proto uh, proto Slavic. So uh, because you have seen here this uh, a, a star, so in this lexicon the entry words or the lemma. The lemmata actually uh, proto uh, proto proto Slavic proto Slavic forms, um, and then uh, after each lemma, you have the uh, Church Slavonic, uh, Church Slavic, and Eastern Eastern uh, Eastern dialects, Eastern languages, Western languages, or South. So it's uh, Eastern uh, Slavic, Western Slavic. South Slavic. So in Eastern Slavic, you have Russian. In Western, you have Czech, you have uh, Slovenian, Slo Slovakian, yeah. And you have, uh, this is Polish. And then uh, in South, you have Serbo Croatian. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, basically like this. And then this dictionary is very good because uh, you have the uh, uh, information uh, also in Leaf. And uh, I assume that you all know that uh, what leaf means, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and then, so this is pretty a lucky case because the old church Slavonic form is basically the same like the uh, proto um, Slavic. But there are also other cases like um, um, Let's move on. So, for example, like this one, it's called uh, it's uh, in uh, like in Old Church Slavonic, 
it's Yeren, Yerenye, or Yeren, uh, but the uh, Proto Slavic one is called Elenye. So the unlaut is different, right? So uh, I will explain a little bit. So this is. Um, so this is the form in ultra slavonic, but uh, compare the form. Uh, so I just uh, write it write it like this. I hope you understand. This P P stands for Proto Slavic. Oh, I just oh, okay. Uh, it's pretty uh, to save some space. Sorry, yeah. to save some space. It's called Ele uh, Ele Nu. Sorry. Nu or onye. So, so you see uh, the difference is here, and we will we will come back to this difference later. Uh, keep in mind uh, if you have a ye uh, in uh, OCS, uh, it does not really mean that it starts with a ye. This year is actually a secondary introduced uh, unload, uh, unload. Secondary, it's actually a secondary, uh, secondary introduced. Uh, okay, this is a year. This year, put it here. Um, yeah. and then OCS. It's actually secondary introduced. Uh, okay, so uh, this is uh, this is one of them, the etymological dictionary of Slavic inherited lexicon uh, by Leiden. And uh, as I said, uh, if you want to use this dictionary, uh, you need to know the Proto-Slavic uh, forms, but it is not always the case, right? And then the best uh, solution is that you check the index. So there's a very detailed index here. So you just move on to the old church Slavonic part like this here. So uh, you uh, check the uh, forms and then you find the uh, corresponding page. Okay, so this is one. Um, and before we uh, stop, um, I show you the, the next one. So next one is uh, by a Russian uh, scholar called uh, yeah, Trubachev or Trubachev. Uh, yeah, the name is actually uh, it's it's, a, it's written in Russian. And it's published uh, until now, and we can check the Wikipedia page if you want. There's also an introduction of this dictionary. Wait a minute. So it's called Etymological Dictionary of the Slavic Languages. Is this is uh, its cover, and uh, uh, as you can see, this dictionary was uh, started uh, about uh, like uh, fifty or seventy years ago, and uh, until uh, it's still not finished. But until now, uh, about uh, uh, until now, until 2018, uh, 41 volumes uh, have been published, and uh, you find the uh, publication information here. This is basically the most comprehensive dictionary we have. So uh, this is actually all the 41 volumes, and uh, uh, we can actually have a look uh, if you are interested. So this is uh, actually the, the dictionary. It's called uh, Etymology uh, Chensky Slavar, uh, Slavar uh, Slavyansky uh, Yaziko. Yeah. Uh, my Russian pronunciation is terrible. Just uh, don't mind. Yeah. So you know that it's a, a it's a pro, it's a uh, etymological dictionary for the proto. It's actually for the Slavic uh, language, and actually inside the, this language. It also gives the proto. You see, it also uh, offers the proto um, proto Slavic proto Slavic forms. Yeah, you find it here uh, called uh, Batu and so on. So this is 
Okay, so uh, let's make a, a, make a break and then uh, we will uh, talk about uh, other things later. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is basically. So I think we can make the, uh, I can make the summary after we finish it. Okay. Okay. I can stop, I can stop the, uh, okay, yeah, I already started uh, recording, so uh, probably uh, let's move on, I just uh, talk about the lexicon, and uh, uh, probably we uh, just to talk briefly the grammar, because we will uh, check the grammars uh, later in our uh, following classes. So for the grammar, uh, actually there are several options. Uh, we have actually several options. Uh, but uh, I just to concentrate on the uh, grammars uh, written uh, in uh, German, French, and English for uh, for reading reading Russian for me is uh, much difficult, um, much more difficult than uh, reading uh, German, French, or English. So for the grammar, uh, as you can see, uh, there are actually two sections. Uh, the first part uh, is the synchronic, uh, the synchronic grammar. For the synchronic grammar, it's actually the descriptive grammar. Uh, sorry, it's actually the dis. Descriptive, descriptive, sorry, the descriptive ones. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, okay. So for the descriptive dramas, uh, I think uh, probably we uh, start from the German one. Uh, in Germany, if you want to study Old Church Slavonic, there are actually uh, several uh, options. Uh, the textbook used in Munich uh, is by this author uh, called uh, called Trunter, and Trunter uh, has written a textbook called uh, this is actually his his textbook um, called Ein Praktisches Lehrbuch des Kirchenslawisch in 30 Lektionen. Uh, so practical uh, textbook of Kirch, uh, church Slavonic in 30 courses, mm -hmm. uh, certain lessons. And uh, it is uh, actually, uh, it has actually several, mm -hmm. how do you say that? So each uh, lesson uh, has not only grammar, but also the background. So uh, if you read this grammar, it's also uh, about uh, 200, 300 pages. It's very, uh, it's very detailed, contains a lot of information. So it also uh, explains some um, historical grammar of the uh, Old Church Slavonic, but not so detailed as we will uh, look at uh, later. So this is basically uh, the grammar and uh, you find it in this grammar I can show you. There are several, uh, So you see, there's some basic knowledges uh, about the um, about the texts uh, we have already seen. For example, the codex, different codex. Yeah, the uh, yeah, this is uh, actually yeah. And then, uh, as I said, there's also a, a grammar like this one talks about the um, phonology, and later on uh, you have it. Uh, like uh, other uh, other forms, yeah. This, this, uh, the, the PDF is not so good. I, I only actually use uh, the paperback book. So this is actually a book uh, by uh, Trund. So in German, there is a book uh, by uh, by Trund, yeah, uh, by Trund. But uh, another more famous one is by this author called Leskin. Uh, he is actually one of the most famous um, scholars for Old Church Slavonic. So it is called uh, the 
äh, Handbuch der altbulgarischen Sprache, äh, Grammatik, Texte und Glossar. So this book is pretty good. Uh, it explains the grammar. Uh, and at the end, there's also a selection of texts uh, and also a glossary. So it's pretty good if you want to learn the uh, grammar by yourself. It also offers you some exercise. So uh, let's probably uh, check just the uh, in, uh, check just the contents. Wait a minute. So you can see that there are already ten or eleven uh, editions. It's uh, actually first published, I think, about one hundred years ago. You see, this is a version in two, in nineteen. Uh, you see, uh, this is uh, this is a edition published in 1922, about 200 years ago. And at that time, it is already the sixth edition. So you can see that how long the tradition of uh, studying or the research in uh, church Slavonic or Slavic languages in Germany. So it's pretty, pretty long history, yeah. Okay, uh, and then uh, we uh, check the edition uh, in 1990. Uh, wait a minute, so, ah, okay. So basically, uh, the grammar, uh, you have the script, and then you have the pronunciation, and uh, uh, then the loud lever, the uh, phonology, uh, about uh, uh, vowel and uh, consonant, uh, wait a minute, yeah, vowel and consonant, and then uh, about the, yeah, very detailed, and then about the uh, declination in the forms. So you have the declination of the nomina, and the nomina, it means that substantive and adjective, I close the window, it's pretty noisy. Pretty noisy. So about the substantives and adjectives, and then uh, different stems, like E stem, and the consonant stems and the N stems. So you see that it's basically the same like the, like the Sanskrit grammar, like the uh, Tocharian grammar and so on. So the er, the er uh, stems like the Mati, so this is a famous uh, kingship nouns, uh, the mother Mati and so on. So according to the stems, different stems, R stems, of course, there's also R stem. And there's also O stem and so on, yeah. And then the adjectives and then the uh, numerous, yeah. Okay, and then the pronouns, of course. And then uh, the conjugation, the conjugation, uh, the verbs, the different forms of the verbs. Like first of the personal uh, ending, um, uh, and then uh, the different uh, present uh, stems, like the first class is the er or stem, er or stem, and then the second class is nie and ye and ye and so on. And uh, then uh, about the uh, imperfect, uh, you see here is the presence, and then the aorist, and then the imperfect, and so on. And then uh, you have the participle and so on. So actually, from this grammar, you basically know uh, the structure, the structure of Old Church Slavonic. It's just like other um, ancient Indo-European languages. And if you have learned Sanskrit, Greek, or Latin before, it's pretty easy for you to understand the structure. Okay, so then comes a very important uh, part. It's a paradigma. So it tells you the different forms uh, of uh, a simple verb. Uh, yeah, like uh, the neson, the tekon, uh, yeah, like this, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, this is a paradigma, paradigma, yeah. Primär, primär verba, and so on. So it's just a, basically the, same. I mean, this is our, our paradigmas. This is our uh, paradigms. Uh, yeah, the examples. Yeah, and uh, then uh, at the end, this is a text. 
So you see that the grammar is not actually very uh, thick, right? It's about so it's about one hundred seventy pages, and uh, uh, and remember that there's also some background information. So actually, the grammar is not too much. I mean, about one hundred fifty pages, yeah. And then comes a very uh, long uh, reading part, the text. So you see, this is uh, almost uh, uh, included in all the uh, textbooks, uh, this codex, uh, which you have already seen at the very beginning, the codex uh, of Fences you have here. So it also selects from the Lucas, from the Luca, uh, yeah, and so on. And then at the end, uh, you have a glossary. So it's basically uh, like this. This is actually the, the grammar uh, in Germany you already use. And then um, actually another grammar uh, in uh, French. Uh, this is actually uh, the German one. And then in, uh, in French, if you prefer French, there's a very good diction, a very, a very dic uh, good one by Meillier, but it is a little bit old. Uh, and then we check the updated version by this one, uh, by Jan. And uh, I just uh, show you the, uh, uh, this, uh, this is a, a book by, um, this is a book by, uh, by Jan. Um, called uh, Manuel du Vieux uh, Slav. Yeah, Vieux Slav is old Slavic, old church Slavonic, and uh, it has actually two volumes. First volume is grammar, and second volume is text uh, with uh, glossary. It's published in 1964, and uh, uh, if we check the table contents, so in the French books, you always find the table of contents at the very end. Uh, I don't know why, but um, it's it's a tradition that you always find the table of contents at the very end. And even the books published in in Belgium, not only uh, in uh, in France, it means that uh, the French books are really uh, like this. So you see, first the introduction, and then the phonology, and uh, in phonology there are uh, vowels, uh, le vayer, and then les consonnes, les, les, uh, les, con, les consonnes, les consonnes. And then, uh, uh, ah, okay. So it really has something to do with your IP address, right? Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay, and then the flexion des noms, and then um, the substantive. Uh, okay, and then uh, take a look. Uh, the substantive uh, you see uh, uh, in different stems, uh, like this is a stem in U, this is a stem in O, and also a stem in E, and also a stem uh, in other uh, forms. Yeah, like yeah. Okay. So you basically have the structure uh, of the grammar. And then this is also feminine, uh, like uh, in air, uh, and so on. And then adjectives, of course, and then pronouns, uh, pronoun, and then um, uh, uh, le nom, uh, le nombre, so the, uh, the numbers, uh, the nombre cardinal, uh, the cardinal number, and then the ordinal number, yeah. This is here. And uh, okay, and then uh, talk about the cases. So how to use these cases? Yeah, uh, the cases have different meanings and so on. And also talks about the formation uh, of the of the nouns. So it's a little bit uh, historical here, but not really historical. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the verb, of course, and you see. The uh, old church Slavonic o OCS has actually uh, these uh, forms: uh, the present, of course, and then the imperfect. Uh, sorry, imperative. Sorry, imperative. And then uh, the aorist. Um, yeah, aorist. And then uh, imparfait. Of uh, imparfait at the end. Imparfait. So. 
Okay. Uh, and then, um, uh, okay, and then uh, some participles here. Participles. Uh, okay, so this is basically, uh, basically the, um, the same, yeah. And then there's also uh, composed forms, compound, compound forms, uh, like the perfect. So in perfect, uh, actually, uh, this uh, expressed by uh, two words. Uh, one is participle, another is uh, copula, or how do you say that? Yeah, the copula, yeah. Okay, 就是系統詞,就是加一個分詞,大概這樣構成的, okay. Uh, okay, and uh, this is basically the, uh, the grammar. You find also uh, the uh, very detailed uh, explanation of the uh, present, uh, different present forms. Uh, the present in uh, the, the book is not really good, uh, like in near and also in air or the, in uh, nest or uh, and so on. So I actually basically the uh, different categories. Uh, okay, so this is basically the grammar uh, by the young. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, and then uh, of course the English one. Uh, probably uh, you are all interested. So this is uh, English, uh, the best English uh, grammar, uh, best English grammar, not best grammar. Uh, so so this is the best. Uh, English grammar for uh, so this is the uh, best old church Slavonic grammar written in English, not the best uh, grammar ever uh, for old church Slavonic. I have to make it clear here. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, written in English, yeah. Uh, so it is, uh, uh, it's it's like this. Uh, Wait a minute. So it's called Old Church Slavonic Grammar and the Seventh Revised Edition by Horace Lund. Uh, so Horace Lund, um, you see, it's already Seventh Edition, so it's also uh, very popular, used by a lot of people. It's published in the Goethe in 2001. It's pretty updated, and uh, but check it, but check it. So still, this grammar is more than 100 years old. Uh, it's revised and updated and uh, and so on. So it's pretty uh, also very uh, useful. And you find the information, I don't repeat it, and you can check it, it's written in English. Uh, so this is uh, a grammar written in English. Uh, so learned. And then uh, the second one uh, is uh, a historical one. Mm. Historic, yeah. And for the historic, there are actually several, but I just uh, uh, choose uh, probably the, um, yeah, the a little bit uh, updated one. So this is uh, a book by uh, Aruma, it's called Aruma, and it has three volumes, uh, I can show you. Uh, this is the first, uh, it's called Ur-Slavish Grammatic, so it's actually the comparative uh, grammar, um, and uh, it has four, uh, three volumes. The first volume, uh, wait a minute, it's first, first volume is uh, Introduction, Einleitung, and uh, uh, Phonology. Yeah, Einleitung Phonology, is published in 1964 in Heidelberg. And then uh, the second part uh, is about the consonant. Yeah, so you can see uh, it's pretty, it's it's so like it's so German. It's so systematic. It's so clearly put. So it's just a uh, so mechanic, yeah, right? It's like the German typical German grammar, and 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 the third volume uh, is about the forms, the different forms. Yeah. So I can we can just uh, take a look at the at the um. Uh, at the content, and you see that it's really so uh, systematic. So the simple vowel, vowel namely uh, Proto-Indo-European E to Ur Slavic E and the Ur Baltic. So this grammar is also con uh, contains also information about the Baltic language. So you all probably, uh, so probably uh, a lot of you know that uh, there's a 
uh, family called the Balto Slavic. So it means that these two language families are really closely connected with each other. And you find it also here. And then uh, the uh, uh, PIE -E, uh, equals War Slavic E and the War Baltic E is like this. So actually in, in Slavic, uh, in Slavic uh, for the long E, uh, you write it like a like a short e. You write it like a short e, but the but the origin is actually uh, the origin is actually the long e. And uh, for the short e, if you really have a short e, it is written like this. Oops, sorry, it's written like this. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually. And then uh, for the uh, Slavic, uh, for the Slavic, if you have a, uh, wait a minute, uh, if you have a long, if you have a long U, it's written like a U, it's, uh, it's written like a, 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 how to say that, Y, it's written like this. Uh, but in older, like in in old church Slavonic, uh, it's written like uh, all like this one. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, uh, I, we can we can check the we can check the alphabet. Uh, wait a minute. So uh, let's check the Cyrillic, uh, the Cyrillic alphabet. Uh, it's actually uh, written uh, with. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's, it's written like this one. Yeah, it's written. Uh, it's the transliteration is this one and it's written like this one. Yeah, um, I don't know how to describe it, but you, you have the idea. It's written like this one. Yeah, okay. It, it really corresponds to the U uh, in Greek. So uh, yeah, it's uh, translated from Greek. So this U, Really corresponds, really corresponds to Greek U like this. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, let's uh, move on. So I, I won't actually explain all, but I just want to highlight the uh, diff the uh, special ones. So if you have actually a U, a short, uh, if you have really a short U, it is written like this one uh, in Slavic languages. Yeah. Or some some people actually transcribe it uh, like this one. Th this someone uh, sorry someone transcribed it like this one. Yeah, like a word, uh, like a very short word. Yeah, and th and then actually you see here the development the development from Indo-European to um, Slavic and Baltic is pretty clear. This is. Actually, the book which I really highly recommend, uh, called "War Slavish Grammatic" by uh, Peter Aruna. Okay. Okay. So I think this is almost uh, uh, for today. We already uh, reached the time, and uh, for the uh, for the for the rest, uh, we have to move on uh, to the. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, so actually, for the next part, uh, for the reading and for uh, the other uh, grammar, because actually in 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 um, in French, we also have a very detailed uh, grammar by Vayan. Vayan has actually published two grammars. The first one is the uh, grammar for uh, for Old Slavic. The second one is a, set, uh, it's a five volume uh, for the comparative grammar, the Kamer Comparé de Langue Slav uh, by André Vaillant. Yeah. So it's much more comprehensive than the one by himself. Yeah, so it's five volumes. The first volume, the second volume, uh, the second volume is about morphology and so on. The five volumes is pretty uh, comprehensive. So uh, before we stop, uh, let's make a brief uh, a review uh, 
let's make a zusammen fasten. Zusammen uh, fasten. So it's like a, a summary uh, of what we have learned today. So today is the first class. Uh, we talk about the, uh, this is the introductory class. And we talk about the language. Uh, the focus of our course is actually the old church Slavonic. It's uh, called Alt Kirchen Slavish or Alt Bulgarish. And it's the oldest stage, oldest, sorry, the oldest preserved uh, stage of the Slavic language. And the manuscript, uh, the manuscript is about 9th to 10th century. Or, yeah, it's about like this. And the Slavic is a Saturn language. And uh, um, you already see, we uh, checked the example. Uh, okay, and then for the texts, uh, uh, for the for the scripts, we actually have two variants uh, called glagolitic and uh, Cyrillic, two variants. Uh, and then uh, we talk about uh, the origin. Uh, they are actually uh, derived from the uh, Greek alphabet. And uh, we talked about the, uh, the pronunciation of the two alphabets, v and the year, because they are borrowed from the Greek alphabet in the Byzantine period, like the ninth century, uh, the pronunciation of the uh, Greek uh, has already changed and uh, different uh, from the time of Plato, at least. Yeah. And then um, uh, we talk about the, um, the texts, the codex, uh, this famous uh, codex, called uh, Zaklafensis, uh, yeah, and looks like this. And, um, um, and uh, inside this uh, codex, we actually have four Evangelists. Uh, I, the Matthew, the Marcus, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, and Luca and Johan, yeah, okay. So this is the uh, four Evangelists preserved in this Codex. This is a very important codex. We are going to uh, read it later, and then we talk about uh, the lexicon uh, to be used. Um, uh, actually, uh, first the uh, the semantic one uh, for the meaning and the parallels. Uh, it's called uh, it's it's this one. Yeah, this one. Wait a minute. So this is a lexicon, uh, the most comprehensive lexicon uh, called Lexicon Linguae Paleo Slovenicae. It has four volumes. It's pretty comprehensive. And then we talk about ed etymological dictionary. Uh, one is the Russian uh, etymological dictionary by Vasma. Uh, this is Osa, a very famous uh, scholar. This is actually a Russian uh, edition. So the, 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 the edition, uh, the first, he, he actually published two editions. The first one is the German one, German and Russian one, he published two versions, but they are basically the same. Although the Russian one has probably uh, uh, added something. Yeah, it's basically the same. So you use the German is enough. And then we talk about the etymological dictionary and one of it, um, and we also checked the, the word in the dictionary. Uh, yeah, uh, the one by Leiden and uh, another one um, by, uh, by this person. Wait a minute. So another one is by uh, Trubashov. Uh, or, yeah, Trubashov, it's, it's this one. Etymolo, uh, Slaval, uh, Slavinsky, uh, Yaziko. It's like this, yeah. It's, uh, there are already uh, 41 volumes, but not finished. Uh, so it covers already a lot of alphabets until the P, so it's um, pretty, um, it's already good yeah, to use. Uh, and then we'll talk about the grammar. Uh, there are a lot of grammars, uh, actually. Uh, the, uh, the German one, Aruma, and the French one. So. So the synchronic descriptive grammar, we have several options. Uh, one by Trunt, uh, Leskin, and the French one by Meillier, and the updated version by Bayan. 
and the English one by Lunt. And for the historical one, we have Aruma. It's pretty systematic and uh, very clearly um, organized. And then the French one is by Vayan. So Vayan has five volumes, and uh, uh, Aruna, uh, Haruma has three volumes. Okay, so this is basic for today, uh, and uh, we will uh, have uh, the second uh, Slavic class probably uh, after one month. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, so this is basically for today. And uh, the schedule for uh, June uh, is already there, and uh, you will you will see it soon uh, in this week. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for your attention until now and uh, for your patience. And I hope you enjoy it and uh, not so boring. Um, okay. Okay. So. Um, yeah, you're welcome. So uh, I will, uh, as usual, uh, upload the file to the uh, website. Uh, so um, have a good evening and uh, uh, enjoy this week. Have a nice week. Okay, uh, goodbye, everyone.